Welcome back to part three of The Diamond of Life. And we're continuing our conversation with Robert F. Newkirk, Jr. Um, Robert, I, I have a question that was interesting to me when you're talking about sort of our use of negative language and how it impacts our entire life. Talk to me more about that. Well, one of the thing, positions I take in the book, and in the last segment we talked about how powerful words are, because the words that you speak manifest themselves into the future, and then they become. So your faith is affected by what you hear. And the more you speak the words, the more they're gonna manifest themselves. Next thing you know, you're gonna be seeing them face to face. So we have to change our language. But there's a source. I look at the source of where those words come from, as in Webster's Dictionary. Now, Noah Webster, he wrote the first dictionary in 1799. Uh, he died in 1840. When he wrote the definitions, he had to make sure that the definitions were in alignment with the times. Mm. And ever since that time, nobody's ever gone back and revisited those definitions. Now, they've added on to the, the dictionary, but they've never really looked at the original definitions and their uh, meaning and how they relate to the day. So here we are in the information and technology era, still using words that are defined back in the slave era. And in that time, they were designed to instill the superior, inferior complex. And a lot of people are having to deal with that, still using those same words. Matter of fact, uh, Webster Dictionary today calls themselves the voice of authority. Well, my question is, who gave them the authority to be my voice? So I take my opportunity in the book to take some key words and go revisit those words, and then when it's necessary, redefine them. Like what kind of words? Tell me what words you're redefining. Well, there's a group of words that I like to address, five in particular. That is genius, smart, normal, stupid, <laughs> moron. <laughs> uh, no, sorry. All of those words but one need to be stricken from the dictionary. And the one that needs to remain is a genius. Why? because everybody is a genius in their own right. Now, the issue with society is, is that society only address one genius. And that genius is verbal linguistics. Well, Robert Kiyosaki, who wrote this book called Rich Kid, Smart Kid, he makes mention that there are actually seven major categories of genius. And uh, let me go through those real quickly with you. In addition to verbal linguistic, there's mathematical genius, there's spatial genius, interpersonal genius, intrapersonal genius, physical genius, and environmental genius. And the issue is, is that each of us has a genius that we're automatically good at. Then there's a genius that, okay, take a little work and we'll become good at. And then there are certain geniuses, well, I may have to work a little bit harder, but I can get there. The problem is, is that when you use the old five words, you classify people into those categories. So if I take a kid that's in first grade, and I call him a genius, I take the other kid, I call him stupid, they know what those words mean according to Webster's Dictionary. Well, the genius, he has to maintain genius status. He can't lose that, because that's on the top. I can't afford to go down. So he does everything he can to maintain the genius status. So if there's a problem and he runs into an issue, well, I'm a genius. I'm supposed to be able to figure this out. So I move forward and I work and I work day and night, sometimes unknown to anybody else, to make sure I can solve that problem because I'm genius. Well, if you take that same problem you take to the one that you just called stupid, well, the stupid, he knows what that means. And if he can't get the problem, it's because I'm not supposed to, because I'm stupid. And then he stops, he quits. He doesn't pursue the problem anywhere. He doesn't look to go get help to solve the problem. He doesn't look to find understanding for the problem. He just stops and accepts the fact that he's AK stupid. That's why he had to strike those words from the dictionary all of those words but genius because he has the capability to learn. Matter of fact, education comes from the Latin word educere, which means to draw out. You're supposed to draw out the genius in the person and you're supposed to find a way to do that. And everybody has a way of learning. So if you can find the way that child learns 
and make him become a master at learning that way, he'll be able to pick up anything that he wants. And there you have your genius. So it's just, it's like, it's a limitation of sorts. It's like, oh, that door's always locked, and you don't even try to open the door because you're told it's always locked, right? Well, let's look at it from this standpoint. Let's say I've got a problem, and that problem is a level five problem, okay? If I'm going from the mentality that it's a level one problem, that's a big problem. So I have to, oh my goodness, we're in trouble because we got a level five problem here. I don't know what to do. And so the thing, the tendency is to freeze because fear is so great that I can't do anything about it. Now, if I come at it from a level 10 mentality and I have a level five problem, no problem because it's, it's another issue. We've dealt with this problem. I'll figure out how to get over this hump. It's just a little minor bump in the road. No problem. We'll take care of it and we keep it moving. So that's how we have to keep it working there because that makes the difference on how you look at it. And words are a reflection of how a person sees themselves into their external environment. Well, unless people have gone to the website, which is robertfnewkirk.com, talk about a little bit more of a thing. What are these level 10, level 5 problems? Tell me about that. It's not even about the level of the problem. It's just the fact that there's a problem. The levels uh, reflect how you're looking at it. Ah, so it's, a, it's your point of view. It's exactly the point of view. Level one is like, there's no way I can solve this problem. <laughs> level 10 is, oh, that's no problem. So anywhere in between, if you're getting above what the level of the problem actually is, you can overcome it. If you're thinking below the level of that problem, oh, it becomes pretty intense and we're not exactly sure how to take care of this problem. I see. So who's this book for? How is this book different than the myriad of other self-help books that are, that are on the shelf? The biggest thing, I think, is that this book contains solutions of if you're trying to become better within yourself, it has the tools to help draw that out and then gives you the metrics that you need to step along the way. Um, I, in most cases, you'll find that books will say, okay, you're having this problem, well, you need to get here and let's go from here to here. Well, what happens when you finally get there? What's next? Uh, how do I know that I'm actually there or if I'm a little short? Uh, where I am, am I in this process to understand where I need to go? And the book itself kind of helps you get there along the way because it helps describe situations. It helps describe the difference between the physical self and the complete self, which includes your spiritual, mental, social, and emotional beings. A lot of us are big into building the physical self. That's why weight rooms and gym memberships are so prominent, is because everybody's looking to get the physique that they're looking for, to look good in the bathing suit when they go to the <laughs> beach during the summer. But you can't develop the complete self unless you start attending to your spiritual nature, your mental capabilities, your emotional capabilities, and all those put together, only then can you actually grow. And the book itself tells you how to do that, and you can also get more information at www.robertfnewkirk.com. Well, there's a lot more to talk about, so we're gonna eat this elephant one bite at a time, because it sounds like that's what you're talking about. Uh, come back and join us for part four, and we're gonna continue our conversation with Robert F. Newkirk, the author of The Diamond of Life.